So do you guys remember that computer that I built a couple months, a few months back, this purple one? Um, it's back because it's having some weird issues. I figured while I have it too, we'll deal with the recall issue regarding the, the screw on the PCI bracket and all that kind of, there was a recall on these H1 cases, um, but I'm not entirely sure what went wrong. So we're gonna kind of diagnose it today. We're gonna fix it obviously because I built it. And so I, I definitely will maintain and fix the systems that I built that end up having weird issues. This is like the month of people's computers just having all kinds of problems. Nick's computer, this computer, Black Ice didn't want to stay turned off. It kept turning itself on. I fixed that one easily though. So let's go ahead and just see if we can figure out what the problem is. Before we get started, I want to go ahead and tell you guys that our non-limited uh, edition long sleeve shirts are available on store.js2cents.com. There's one run of those. We're not going to be replenishing those. When they're gone, they're gone. So this particular merch style, this is the limited edition one with the sleeve print. But this particular merch style is, uh, is running out and when it's gone, it's going to be gone. So I know that sounds very LTTstore.com-ish of me to constantly be peddling the merch, but we want to move this one that way we can start new designs and start all over. Anyway. Uh, here's the computer. This is the H1, that computer I built a few months back for my oldest daughter's friend. Um, so kind of a long story short, the computer wasn't used for a while because as tends to happen with kids, she got grounded and she couldn't use the computer. And once they got the, she got the computer back and they hooked it back up because they like literally yanked it out of the computer room. They were like, no, pff, took it out and did the amazing parent thing of being like, you cannot have it because you're being a punk. But moving forward, um, when they plugged it all back in, they started getting an error uh, with the, when the computer turns on and it's trying to post, it says CPU fan error, which I was like, oh, okay, that's fine. We just turn it off, ignore it. Cause um, there's an AIO in here and I was fairly certain the AIO powers the fan. And off they went. And then the next day they were like, hey, the computer is giving a temperature warning. Now remember, this is a 9700K, I believe it is. I think it's a 9700K, yeah. And so uh, it is an Intel system. It does have you know all of the thermal safeguards in there as you'd expect, AMD does as well. But then I started thinking like, well, wait a minute, what did I do to this system? And I, I built it obviously, so that's why I'm gonna be taking care of it. So I think what we should do instead of going through the troubleshooting process right now with you, we'll show you the problem, we'll show you the issue, and then we'll work through the diagnose uh, steps. While I'm in here, I'm gonna take the opportunity to deal with the H1 recall. Um, which are some, there's a screw in here that needs to be either removed or changed. That way it doesn't cause any sort of arcing or, or fire or anything like that. So let's go ahead and uh, it's powered. It's got power. Let's just turn it on and let's see what happens here. Okay, pump is running. That was my first concern. We're just gonna go into the BIOS because I can see what's happening in the BIOS without going into Windows. My first concern is, is the pump running? Here's the CPU temperature. Yes, the pump is running. And um, yeah, so I'm, I want us to just sort of see what happens here over time to see if that starts to, to fail or anything. But interestingly enough, you can see there's no fan RPM showing. The pump is going, you can see it right there, 4,115 RPM. So that's good news. I was really concerned that the pump died. This particular AIO is specific to this chassis. This chassis has a very specifically designed and the way that the tubes are run, and although you know I can get another AIO from NZXT, I was just really hoping that wasn't gonna be the case. But I'm concerned right now that the fan isn't turning, which, which is why they were able to get some gaming sessions in where over time it just heat soaks. Now, radiators will give passive cooling. Radiators will passively cool. It's just as the load increases, they can't keep up and over a longer duration, they will eventually hit you know, whatever that temperature is where they are, are in a thermally shut down. I think on this Intel, I think is 105. Beyond there, it starts to throttle. And I think if it hits like 110 or 115 is where it will actually shut down. I could be wrong on those numbers, but I know 105 is where it will start to thermally throttle. In a few seconds we've been sitting here, it's only up to 24C. So I'm gonna do this first. I'm gonna start taking off these panels. Okay, and I can see right away, our fan is not turning. Look in there. You see that? You can see the blades of the fan. They're not turning. It's not stuck. It's not hitting on anything. I can turn it by hand. Oh, oh boy. That, okay, there's a lot of resistance on that. So when I try and turn the fan by hand, oh, it's like totally bound up. It's like, it's not acting like there's a wire or something pushing against it. It's acting like the bearing has seized up. So I can go ahead and turn this off. So I'm happy because this really does look now like this is just nothing more than a bad fan. Now this isn't on NZXT because if you recall 
I changed the fan to RGB because I thought you'd be able to see it. You really can't. You can't see it through the, uh, through, the, through the radiator. So while we're in here, we might as well just go ahead and handle the cooler and handle that recall. I'm really also happy at how well this paint job I did is holding up. Um, it belongs to a kid, therefore it does get a bit abused. It's a little dirty at the moment, but the paint is still on there. It's not all flaking off or anything. We did a whole video about how to paint a case. If you guys want to get a nice sturdy paint job like I did, this also gives us a chance to clean out the radiator because see here's the, and this is filtered by the way. So you can see how much dust still made its way in there. So this also really makes me excited because it means that it's not NZXT's, like nothing on NZXT failed. Um, so I'll show you how to get this cooler out or down. It's really neat. I love the H1 case. This is the one they call the Xbox Series X inspired. Um, you just take off these two screws and then that just folds down. So as you can see, look at that. Do you see, so yeah, this should be interesting to show you guys. I also like that it has this little grill on here because this grill keeps the uh, wires and stuff that are in here from pushing into it. Now, if you take a look at the way the cooler is designed, you can see how the cables or the wire or the, the tubes stick out the side and they're a very specific length. That way, when you close it up in there, see how it all kind of retracts? It's pretty awesome. Now I'll show you what went wrong with this fan. This fan, if you're curious, this is one of the metallic gear fans. This is a company owned by Fantech or Fantex. And we obviously won't be reusing this particular one, will we? If I have one of my 140 maglev fans, I'll put a, a Corsair maglev in there. One, I have a feeling that it's the orientation. So depending on the type of bearing, now watch this. <laughs> There's your indication. So I have a theory. I believe this to be a dynamic fluid bearing. Dynamic fluid bearings, they don't like vertical positions like this as much as say a sleeve bearing or a ball bearing or a magnetic bearing. Because what tends to happen is dust can get in there. Uh, what I think might have even happened here is I feel like this bearing might have gotten full of dust and then it mixed with the fluid, which is like an oil. And then it's doing that now where it can't rotate. There is a way to service fluid bearings, but this isn't something that should have been needed after only a few months. To be fair, the area we live in is very windy. It's very dry. It's very dusty. All elements that make the bearing type of fan or the type of bearing that you use in your fan, all the more important. One thing to keep in mind though, is sometimes fluid bearings don't like to be upright like this because it causes premature wear on a, the gravity side of the bearing, which is at the bottom. So they like to be more horizontal in my opinion. So they make good top of case fans, you know, bottom intakes, but or vertical like this, not my favorite choice. I also apparently never took off this plastic right here. I can't even get to it with my fingers. These are plastic tipped reverse tweezers, which means they'll hold on to whatever you, you grab like this. See? And these came in my iFixit kit. So I'm gonna go with a 140 maglev fan from Corsair. It's not gonna light up though because I'm not gonna put all the lighting crap in here that Corsair needs with their fans. So I'm gonna so, sort of bundle up this RGB wire and set it aside. But I'm going with the maglev fan because of the reasons I just explained with bearing type. So that basically means I'm not gonna worry about this bearing running out or wearing out because it's magnetic. It means it's a levitating fan. It's not actually touching the bearing anywhere. It will last basically as long as magnets will, which is a lot longer than we're gonna be around. Now, the fan and stuff that comes with the NZXT, um, obviously it's all the right length and stuff. You really gotta go back and watch the build for this if you wanna see why this is all slightly one-off. It's because you know me, I like to do my custom touches to things, just little things. I'm really happy this was just the fan. And I had an idea that that's what it might've been. I even told him, I was like, mm, it might've just been the fan. Something might've come loose. Um, I'm not happy that that metallic gear fan died so soon. I do have some of the SK fans from Fantex. Remember Fantex and metallic gear are the same company. The problem is they look eerily similar. So I'm a little worried that they might have the same problem over time, which I'm not gonna subject her to. So that's why I'm going with the magnetic bearing fan, which I know will work. This is like a $45 fan too. And it sucks that we're not using the RGB, but with the way it's all encased in there and against the radiator, you can't see it anyway. So it's really not that big of a deal. So we're gonna plug this in is right over here. These are the option, CPU optional and CPU headers. So I'm just gonna sort of use the tube 
to zip tie it to because of the fact that it, it'll move with the tube, which means it won't get pinched anything when I close it up. Now, as I close this up, ha ha, everything clears. So that's kind of nice. Um, you can see with it zip tied to the tubes, as I close the tubes and they pull themselves in, it goes without any sort of interference. That's what's so disappointing about the H1 though, only is the fact that it doesn't have any case lighting itself built in, which I think is like the one little bit that's missing. And the RGB RAM that's in here, and when we had the RGB fan on and it all closed up, you can't see it. So that's why I didn't even bother hooking that part back up. I'm gonna go ahead and close this off, and then I'll show you guys now what the recall is. So if you have one of these H1 cases, the original ones, not the one since the recall. Okay, recall. Let's start by getting the graphics card out of here because it's directly related to the PCI Express um, riser card. This is the PCIe riser card. It comes pre-installed like this. And there's two screws that are mounting it to the, uh, the chassis. So it's screwed in right here and right here. Now the issue appears to be those screws could be biting into the PCB and then touching the case. So they're mounted right here, this metal bit. So the screws are coming through and touching right here and right there. So that then causes it to ground and that can cause a fire because of it could melt the plastic, plastic could catch fire, then it can melt. So the recommendation is specifically with the bottom one and we think the reason why they might be calling out the bottom screw and not the top one is this is probably where the 12 volts running through or something. So I'm not, I'm not gonna take it out because I don't want it to flop around or anything. What I am gonna do is take the screw out and add a plastic washer in there. Then there's no chance of it grounding at that point. And this is what I think you should do as well if you, now NZXT does have a fix kit for this. Um, and I'm a little late to this story, obviously. This happened months ago. But uh, a lot of people may not even be aware of this. And as such is why I'm trying to show you how there's an at-home fix that you can do that's very inexpensive um, granted, you can go to Home Depot or Lowe's or your local hardware store and get little nylon or plastic washers. So let's show you what I'm going to use. NZXT did say on their website for a temporary fix, if you want to do this yourself, if you're not comfortable, I don't see any marks of that appearing like it has any sort of an issue there, so that's good. Um, they said just take out the bottom screw and leave it, but I don't want this being floppy like this. The same reason why I just put those screws on my AMD rig on the bottom of that bracket because of the fact, and it's funny because it's essentially the same type of riser card um, because I don't want it to flop around like that. So these are the washers I'm gonna use right here. These are actually out of an NZXT, or not NZXT, but a uh, EK water block um, standoff kit for like the way that their CPU mounts work. So it's just a nylon washer, as you can see, one's clear, one's not. I'm just gonna add this to the screw. There should still be enough length in the screw for this to still screw in. It doesn't need very many threads. To... Darn it. Now I'm gonna do both for good measure. This is the screw that they've identified as the problem. And they say that it's very uncommon, like it's a very low percentage of cases that have this problem happen. But there, now you can see that's isolated. Okay, getting my iFixit kit. If you missed an opportunity to buy, quite honestly, one of the best gifts that you possibly can for your loved one or yourself, you should love yourself. Therefore you are a loved one. Um, you definitely should look at the description below and get yourself an iFixit kit or for someone. Be like, I'm sorry this is late and not at Christmas, but I love you enough to get you a Christmas present after Christmas is over. And it's an iFixit kit. So I'm fixing our relationship with iFixit. There, so now we've got our washers on there. And that's secure. It didn't change the mounting height or anything, so everything should still line up perfectly fine. There like a glove. I'll tell you this though, they, they've really well, had, had well thought out design here on the way that this mounts up because it is sturdy. Another thing I'm asked over and over and over, Jay, what screwdriver is that? It's a hammerhead made by sledgehammer. No, not sledgehammer, but that's a Napoleon Dynamite reference, by the way. This is like the cheapest electric screwdriver I could find on Amazon a year, two years ago. It even has a built-in signal tester. There is activity up there. It's slow, but there's activity up there. I'll put a link down below to one I recommend, okay? People keep asking me what screwdriver this is. Literally, I wouldn't even, I can't even tell you. I was like, Amazon, electric screwdriver, sort by price low, prime, go. That's how I bought it. This is how I organize my tools when I'm done. Just ask Nick. There, CPU fan, I did it. 
So now we'll just go over here, F7, we'll go over to monitor, we'll go back down to CPU fan speed monitor, and we'll go ahead and turn that CPU fan speed up. Here, we'll have it go 80, 90, 100. There, that way there's plenty of cooling. So, we're up and running. You guys saw in real time how I diagnosed it and uh, took the clues that I was given, which is the, cus the customer saying CPU fan said it stopped working. I thought this is one of the AIOs that controls the fan, not the motherboard. The fact that that popped up later I thought was really odd, but then I thought maybe because it was unplugged for so long that maybe the CMOS battery died, which reset the BIOS, which would have reset that setting if I had turned it off. Had that been the case where the AIO is controlling the fan, it turns out the warning did exactly what it was supposed to do. It also goes to show, apparently she gamed on this for like, a long time before it started giving the thermal problem. And that tells you how well the passive cooling actually worked without a fan cooling it at all. So there we go. We are up and running. We got a fan. We've got, uh, just to double check now, we've got a AIO pump is going. CPU fan is now going at uh, 1100 RPM. We are good to go. So guys, thanks for watching. Um, this fan, when it does this in only a few months and most of it turned off, that becomes really hard to recommend it at that point. So thanks for watching. And as always, we'll see you in the next one. And go buy your long sleeve tees. JJSense.com.